Hey everyone, I'm Matt with Ozark Overland Adventures. And in this video, we're gonna talk about diesel heaters, all, all the diesel heaters. Uh, this is my current collection. Um, full disclosure, most of these were sent to me by the companies, um, except for this one. I purchased this one last year and then got, then, then they sent me another one, <laughs> uh, which I'll get into, I'll, I'll tell you that story in just a little bit. Um, but yeah, what we have here are a mix of uh, two kilowatt diesel heaters, um, a five, and these three are all supposedly eight kilowatt diesel heaters. Uh, so they do come in different sizes. The different sizes uh, will determine, you know, what type of space that you are going to use your diesel heater in, a, a two kilowatt diesel heater is you know going to be perfect for like a like a like a small like a rooftop tent um, any rooftop tent this thing will be great for um, the the larger ones are great for maybe a much larger ground tent a small trailer uh, that sort of thing so the, the we'll get into those details uh, first let me just real quickly discuss diesel heaters in general why a diesel heater uh, for winter camping and, and the pros and cons uh, of them. Um, I switched to using a diesel heater two years ago, two and a half years ago. And it was an absolute, I hate this phrase, but it was an absolute game changer for me for winter camping. Uh, totally transformed winter camping. Uh, I, I don't like really, really, really cold weather. I don't like sleeping in really cold weather because I don't like being layered in multiple layers of clothes, multiple bags. Um, I, I don't like sleeping like that. I don't sleep well like that. So anytime I was winter camping and had to wear clothes, um, you know, wear layers when I slept, uh, sleep in big, heavy sleeping, not big, heavy, but you know, thick, cold weather sleeping bags and maybe layering those up, uh, I, I just don't sleep well. Um, I just don't. Um, the diesel heater has, has changed all that. Um, with a diesel heater, I don't have to have all that stuff. I, honest, I have slept, and this is maybe TMI, uh, but I have slept in single degree digits with a diesel heater in my rooftop tent, in my underwear, with just my normal light sheet and blanket. Um, and it was fantastic. And, and that's the thing is that you can use these and just keep your area warm all night long. You don't have to, you know, it's one thing to, to sleep warm in a tent because of your layers and because of having a good quality, um, you know, winter bag it, that, you know, it's one thing to sleep warm and cozy like that, but it is not fun to then have to get out of that into the freezing cold to get dressed. So, um, so, so that's where these, that's where these shine. Um, so the pros of a diesel heater, first of all, it is a very nice dry heat. Um, I do not like using a propane, uh, buddy heater. I, I, I have used those in the past. I, I do not like those. I, I will not use those, uh, because the heat that they put off is a wet heat. So if you use those in your tent, you will wake up in the morning, if you run it all night, um, if, you, if you run it for extended periods of time, you will have condensation build up in your tent. And that condensation on the thin layer of the tent, maybe sub-freezing temperatures outside, you're gonna get ice in your, on the, the, the top of your tent. So I don't like buddy heaters. I don't like those propane heaters because they produce a wet heat. They also, if you want to use them overnight, to just stay warm all night, um, they, they, they go through propane pretty fast. Um, you, it, uh, you cannot last a night in with a green one pound propane bottle. Um, which brings me to pro number two. These are really fuel efficient. Um, most of these have just over one gallon tanks in them. This one's a little bit different. I'll talk about it in a minute, how it's set up. Um, but most of these have just over one gallon tanks and I can very easily get two nights 
out of a one gallon, out of these tanks. Um, that has never been a problem. So if you're on a multi-night trip and you know carrying an extra two gallons with you, and you'll you'll be good. Now if you're going to crank it up on high because you have a large you know room to or maybe a trailer to to um, to, to heat, obviously it'll go through faster. But my purpose is rooftop tent. Just got this thing on like setting two three, and I, I can use it for easily a couple days. Next pro is once you get them set up, and I'll talk about the setup in a minute. But once you get these set up, I mean, they're really pretty easy to operate. You, you pretty much just turn them on, set the, the heat level, and boom, you're good to go. Um, as long as you take care of them, and I'll, that will actually, co I'll cover in the cons. The cons, uh, biggest issue for me, my, my biggest thing that I hate is that every one of these fuel caps, um, they leak. So if you are driving around with this tank completely full and you're on the trail and you're, you know, you've got this sloshing around, there's a pretty good, you know, there's a pretty good bet that um, when you stop and check, you're gonna have some diesel that has spilled out. Uh, you can see on most, actually, you know, pretty all of these, um, I have taken some, some duct tape and I have covered up the hole, the vent hole that is in the top of these things to help prohibit that from, from splashing around. And it definitely makes a difference. Now, obviously with that hole covered up, you can't, it doesn't naturally vent. So when I get to camp, I crack the, I just crack the cap so that air can, can vent in there. Uh, but that's been my, that's been my fix. It's just a little piece of, of duct tape on the cap. Now I mentioned that, you know, once these are set up, they're easy to operate, but they can be finicky. Um, they are finicky when it comes to things like um, startup voltage. So depending on what you're using to power these, you, it may be hit or miss. Um, I was actually running these four last night, just testing and getting some of my B-roll footage, that sort of thing. And this one right here, I had one power station that I could not get this to run off of. Um, it was a Blue Eddy AC70. For some reason, I, that would the breaker in the AC70 would trip when this was starting up. Th these two, these these would run fine off of it. Um, and these theoretically are the same diesel heater. Um, and this one ran just fine. This one, I it took me three power stations to find uh, one to. To, to get this one to start up. I don't know why. Um, I, I, have, I have no clue as to why. Um, the only thing I can think of is that I did use um, a different 12 volt cord than I used on this one, but I'm using the exact same cord on this one. So I don't know. Uh, but th that, that was an issue. And you, you really need to take care of them um, as far as when you run them. Um, Make sure that you, you know, after it's been running all night, you're getting ready to go the next day, make sure you actually turn them off with the switch and let them do their whole shutdown cycle. I made a mistake with one very similar to this one. It was the very first diesel hitter I ever used. It was actually one that I was borrowing from a friend, but I made the mistake with one similar to this one on our first trip. It was cold in New Mexico. My first time to ever use a diesel heater. Night one, it was great. Night two, it wouldn't work. And that's because I didn't know. And so I just, I, I, I just, it was powered on. I had it turned down. I, I just unplugged it. I, I didn't know it had a shutdown cycle to go through. So that caused carbon buildup inside by just shutting it down. It didn't go through the, it, this shutdown cycle burns off that buildup as best it can uh, to prevent that. And with me just shutting it down, it fouled up the internals. And so we were very cold the next night. Other finicky issues is the hose outputs. So if, especially on these, on these bigger ones, these, these five and eight kilowatt diesel heaters, um, typically you're gonna use a dryer hose out the front, uh, like, you know, like this, to get it to where you want it to go in your, in your tent or whatever. Um, if you are running these on a higher setting, like above five, and you're using this, 
pretty much a standard three inch hose, which this is a three inch output on all of these, um, except for this one. Um, if you're using a standard three inch output, uh, you will have overheating issues because the hose is actually too small and it will back the heat up as, you know, using this type of ducting, it will back the heat up and cause overheating. Uh, it doesn't hurt it. You just, I just restart it and turn it back on. But I fixed that. Uh, a friend of mine actually had a spare four inch hose, which is what this is. And so um, I actually have, they make some three inch to four inch couplers, adapters. I've actually got some that I just ordered off Amazon. Uh, this is a three inch hose that I just clamped the four inch hose to the three inch hose to put on the output. So this I have ran on high uh, with this one and this one with no problem. Another con to using a diesel heater, unless you have a diesel rig, um, you, you have another fuel to carry. So not only are you most likely carrying extra gasoline you, and also carrying propane for your cooking, you are now also carrying diesel uh, with you for your diesel heater. So just note, you know, if you're going to run a diesel heater, you don't have a diesel rig, you will need a third fuel to, to carry around. All right, well, I think that's it with the pros and cons. I think the pros definitely outweigh the cons with the diesel heater. So let's get into the specs and let's get into, you know, what you're looking for in a diesel heater. Now, diesel heaters, if you go on Amazon, and we are pretty much talking about the, you know, the, what's called the Chinese diesel heaters. These are basically Chinese knockoffs of the big name brands like Webasto. Uh, that's one of the the biggest brands is a German company. They make diesel heaters, high quality diesel heaters for RVs and trailers and that sort of thing. Um, but these are basically Chinese knockoffs of that. And so, you know, there's, there's some quality thing, well, you know, quality control stuff that goes uh, along with that. But these things are so cheap, most people don't care. Um, so let's talk about well, let's, let's talk about the prices. So what we have here, um, I think the most expensive diesel heater up here is this one for, well, that's not true, this one. Um, but of the, of the Chinese diesel heaters is this one for one, just under $200 uh, for this one. Uh, these are like around 100 and, 120. I think maybe I saw this one for 110. Um, and this one is more like 130 to 150. And, and, and I'll tell you why here in a minute. And then there's this oddball here, which I'll tell you what it is. Um, but they, they come in mainly, you're, you're gonna see three different sizes. You're gonna see a two kilowatt, a five kilowatt, and an eight kilowatt diesel heater. Um, like I said at the beginning, a two kilowatt is, it's perfect for a rooftop tent. It is not powerful enough, and we know this from experience, to heat any type of decent trailer. Um, it, it just doesn't have the output to, to heat. Our, our Conqueror um, is what we've used to do. Uh, so any interior living space trailer, two kilowatts not gonna, it may take the chill off, but it's not gonna get you warm. Uh, so that's why last year I went to, I purchased this one off Amazon. Uh, it was advertised as an eight kilowatt DC heater. Well, I got it in, set it up, turned it on, tested it out, and I could tell very quickly this was not actually an eight kilowatt diesel heater. Uh, so I contacted the company. This is by Silvel. Um, their branding's not on it, uh, on the front. Uh, this is by Silvel. I contacted the company through Amazon and they said, oh, we're sorry, that was mislabeled. And so I offered to uh, just return this because I needed one. I needed an eight, what I thought was an eight kilowatt to adequately heat my Conqueror. And they said, yeah, we don't actually have those. They're, they're all mislabeled. Um, I was like, what? Uh, so they offered to send me a second five. So I would have two um, instead of one eight. And I accepted their offer. So I actually had two of these, I actually just got rid of one. Um, so you will also, like I said, you will also see five and eight. Here's the truth. There's basically no difference between a five kilowatt diesel heater and an eight. 
as far as actual heat output goes. I tested these last night. This was probably not any type of scientific testing. The, the output, uh, the, the heat exchangers in the eights, it's the exact same size as the five. The fuel pump, exact same. It may pump a little extra fuel in there, but from, from what I saw, the actual heat output, uh, just having them on, on high, using my, my little temperature gun, um, I think, if I remember correctly, they both got up to around 350, 370 degrees between uh, this one and this one. So but this is a five, this is an eight. Heat output was, the, was basically the exact same. So I, you'll find pricing with the eight kilowatts coming in maybe 10 to 15 to $20 more expensive than the five. I wouldn't, uh, there, there's no reason to spend that extra money um, on the eight because it's not really an eight. It's, it's labeled an eight, but it's not. Uh, so do know that. So if you, you know, are finding links and you maybe find the one that uh, a five is out of stock, get the eight or the eight's out of stock, get the five. It's, it's all the same. Um, so those are the sizes. Now this one and this one are both two kilowatt. Um, and you can see this is, um, this, this is a DIY kit that I'll get into in a minute. Um, but this heat exchanger is physically and noticeably smaller than the heat exchanger that is in the, the rest of them. Um, the output uh, is, is quite a bit smaller than, than that. The physical internals, this whole thing, it's just, it's smaller. So again, if you're uh, in a rooftop tent and only want one for that, I, I'd just say get the two. Uh, if you can find it, if, if you can only find the, the f I think the, the five and the eight seem to be the most common on, on Amazon right now. Uh, don't hesitate to, to get one bigger because you can always, you know, if you, maybe you like it warm and toasty, but you can always run these on, on low and be perfectly happy. Um, as you can see, they come in various shapes and sizes. Um, these are horizontal, you know, obviously square and you've got the fuel tank beside the heat exchanger. Uh, this, this makes for a very nice, solid platform to put in the back of your vehicle, put in the back of your, your truck, um, and it doesn't tip over very well. Uh, these are handy, they fit in much narrower spaces. Uh, this has the fuel tank on top of the heat exchanger. And uh, I, really, I really, really like this one, but I have already had issues with it, you know, being on trail and it flopping over and diesel did spill on my, on my rack, uh, which was awesome. Got a nice little diesel stain on the, on the drawer of my, of my gladiator. Uh, so they've got these narrow ones and they got the wide ones. And then this is by a company called H calorie. Um, they sent me this one to check out. I really, I love this form factor. Uh, it is, as you can see, briefcase style. The fuel tank is mounted to the side, um, but I like that you've got access and you can basically store things in here. So I've got my owner's manual. Now you can't leave this stuff in here while it's running, but uh, so I've got my owner's manual. I've got some extra clamps in here. I've got my, my power cord, which easily detaches. So the power cord is, is in here. And if you've got the right hose and don't need too long of a hose, you can store your hose in here, which is awesome. And so far from a brand standpoint, I really like this brand because they're doing some very different things with form factors. They've got this one. They also have the traditional ones like this, uh, but they've got this one, which is very briefcase style. They have one that's uh, this, this box shape, but it has like a, a lid on top and a carrying handle, but it has a, a lid on top so you can easily get in there and access the internals. Um, I, I, I don't have it. I'm, I'm hoping to have one of those in the future that I can actually test and do a review on. Um, KC250 just recently did one of that form factor for each calorie. So check it out if you want to see it. Uh, so the form factors are, they, they, they definitely have their pros and cons depending on where you need them, uh, how sturdy you need to, you know, to, they, you need them to be. 
Um, I, I don't know that I would pick one over the other. I will say this form factor, I do very much like it uh, because the sides have these little clamps here. And so if you need to access inside this for some reason, um, this very easily comes off and you can get access to all the things. Uh, these you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 14 plus screws that you have to undo to gain access to, to them. So they all have their pros and cons. I wouldn't necessarily say one is specifically better than the other, um, other than just how convenient the, the briefcase style is. Now, I want to spend some time talking about this one. Diesel heaters also can come in basically DIY kits, and that's what this is from. So this is the heat exchanger, and with that, um, in the box that it, that it comes with is a massive 10 liter fuel tank. That's awesome. Uh, you get the fuel pump, you get the, the controller. Um, th they all come with a remote. I didn't mention that, uh, but they all come with a remote. And you get your fuel line, you get your muffler, you get your, your hoses, uh, you get your power, your, all your wiring for it, um, all your clamps and whatnot. So uh, your, your bracket to, to mount it somewhere and have the, have the exhaust and the, the proper things um, you know, come out of it. So that's what it comes with the mounting bracket for it that you use. And this is for if you want to you know, DIY it in your own case. I've seen people put them in Plano boxes. I've seen people build them out of um, uh, front runner roof pack, wolf packs. Um, I've seen people, uh, you know, just have a space and build them into a compartment um, in their vehicle, in the back of their, in the back of their vehicle, in their van or RV or uh, trailer. So that's, this is, for the DIYer um, that can has a place to to mount them, and and you don't need the all-in-one, you know, form factors. Now, this is from a company that I don't think is in business anymore. I got this two years ago, um, and I don't think they're in business anymore. But what they do, this they take these um, and they build them into a Pelican case. Now this is a legit Pelican case, so it is very high quality, sturdy case. And as you can see, um, you know, with this case, the, the hose for it is in here, the cord is in here, but this is kind of what it looks like, you know, DIYing it in a, in a Pelican case. And I love the fact that inside the, the Plano case, let's see if I can pull this up and show you. Um, they actually have a printout of the fault of the fault codes. So if you get an error code, they're right here in the case, which I think is really nice. Um, but like I said, this company is not uh, is not in business anymore. This was just a, a guy making these out of his shop. He was selling them for like nine hundred bucks. Um, but with that, you got you know three D printed attachments here. Uh, you got what he thought was a quality heat exchanger. Uh, you got him doing all the labor for this, putting it in a very nice quality Pelican case. Uh, so there was, there was definitely some time involved in producing these, but uh, to my knowledge, he's not doing it anymore. But there is another well-known company that my friend uh, Chad at Overland Addict, uh, one of our channel sponsors, uh, that they sell from a company called Planar, Planar? Planar or Planar, P-L-A-N-A-R. That is very similar to this. I think they use legit Pelican cases for their builds, uh, but they are very high quality. They're also very expensive. I will be getting one of those in the next couple of weeks. I want to test it out. It is a two kilowatt, uh, just like this one, but I want to test it out because, and they run for, 
1100 to 1500 dollars so big jump in price from you know under 200 for all these to to that to you know a 1200 to 1500 dollar diesel heater but you get super high quality components and i think most importantly you actually get a real company to support you you know they have a warranty um, it's they're they're not I would almost consider these disposable because let's be honest if you start having legit problems with one of these you're not gonna be able to, to call up any of these companies through Amazon and get tech support um, at least not good tech support and that, so I almost consider these disposable these are the, the, the ones that like this one and the planar that I'll be getting um, you know they are very high quality they are, uh, you, you get real local US based or North American based, I think Planar is a Canadian company, um, but you get real support out of them, which I think is huge, uh, especially if you are depending on these to get you through uh, the winter. So uh, be looking for that. If, if you would, be sure and subscribe if you're interested in that stuff. And uh, you'll, you'll see those on trips. You will see, um, I'll do a standalone review of that one because it's, it's unique. I mean, you're talking about, you know, spending $1,200 on a diesel heater when you could spend 150. You, you, I want to know why. I don't know what's going on there. So we'll, we'll be checking that out. Um, another thing this particular company did is you'll see this has a, a Rotopax mount. So uh, I, my Rotopax is on my Gladiator, which is not here right now. Um, but they, they, he fabbed up you know, this, this fuel line to go inside of a diesel heater so you get more fuel storage with a diesel heater than you do these guys. Um, so that's, that's, that's the DIY kit. This is kind of what it looks like to, to do it yourself. Um, and, and other options for shapes and stuff. Another thing that you'll notice uh, for, from these is all of the displays all kind of look different. Um, they, the displays are gonna vary from one to the other. I've used all these displays. I, to me, that's not, a, it's not gonna be a factor. You, you may get some more info on it, but all you really care about is what heat is that it's running and error codes if you have them and what heat level you're at and all of these do that uh, so this is the most this is the simplest display um, i think this is the nicest display uh, oh this display is actually on this side it's on the back side uh, i think this is the nicest display it's got a nice little turn dial here to to adjust the heat which i think is really nice and it just it, it's just really good quality um, i like this one too but they also, every single one of them comes with, um, where you go? There it is. Um, that, a remote. They, they all come with some kind of remote. So there's that one. Uh, this one is inside. Um, that one is, there's that one right there. So you can control, you know, if you want to put this, you know, down on the ground or away, you know, outside your tent. And so you can adjust them up and down temperature wise and turn them on and off on and off with the remote so they, they all come with a remote but here's my new favorite thing that this has and this has they have app control which has been my which has been one of my biggest frustrations because like I said they can be finicky and depending on you know your output hose how long it is and all that sort of stuff you can get overheating errors uh, like I did with this one you can get a voltage error if you're in your tent and you're warm and then it has an overheating issue and you don't know why your diesel heater shut off and it's got cold and now you got to get up and get dressed and go out into the freezing cold to diagnose what happened with your diesel heater that's not fun been there done that don't want to do it again so i love the fact that just on your phone you can open up the app and if there's an error code it'll tell you and you can know what is going on with the diesel heater and if it's just uh, an overheating issue well turn it back on turn the heat down a little bit and you'll be good to go. If it's a voltage issue, you're probably gonna have to get down and diagnose that. But most, com most common issue I've had is an overheating issue, uh, which I was able to fix by just lowering the output just a little bit and still stayed warm. 
Uh, so the Bluetooth app, I think to me is, is a huge deal. I personally would not buy one without the Bluetooth uh, feature because I, I think it's just super, super handy. Uh, like I said, this one has Bluetooth, this one has Bluetooth, the rest of these do not. Uh, actually, this one has Bluetooth. Uh, this DIY kit does have the Bluetooth controller, uh, but these do not. So um, these will not be going on trips with me because I can't. Uh, funny thing is they actually all use the exact same app. They, they all use the exact same. And I've had these two running at the same time. And yes, I can switch back and forth with one app in between them. Uh, so if you need more than one diesel heater, that can be handy. Another feature that I'm seeing is the ability to adjust for high altitude automatically. So they have sensors inside, they know their elevation. You can actually see elevation in the app um, and on some displays, but they have automatic elevation uh, adjustment because you know, as you go up in elevation, say you're, you know, we're camping here in Arkansas at 1200 feet elevation, they're gonna run fantastic. You get up into Colorado and you're camping at 10,000 feet elevation, the air's much thinner up there. The oxygen's not as rich up there. Uh, so the air fuel mixture or, you know, that, that air it, that's getting in there, they have to be adjusted. Now there is some way to go into the settings of these and adjust that. I have not done that. That's above anything I want to learn about these things. So I very much like that some of them are coming out now with altitude adjustment. Of these, this one has it. And I'm very sad, this one does not have it. Um, I, I haven't found an H calorie one yet, you know, at least in the specs on Amazon, that has, um, that, that has the high altitude adjustment, which is sad to me. Because all of these form factors here, this is, this is my favorite. But if I've got a trip to Colorado, this is the one I'm taking. Um, and with the, uh, with the Vivors, or Viver, uh, with the Vivors, what I've noticed is all the ones with the Bluetooth control have high altitude adjustment compensation. Uh, the ones without the Bluetooth don't have it. Uh, that's just been my scrolling and looking through the specs and stuff on, on Amazon. That, that's what I've seen. So if a Viver with a Bluetooth is going to have high altitude um, adjustment or compensation, uh, these are not, haven't found an H calorie yet in the specs that lists it. Uh, so if you do travel into higher elevations, just note that's handy to have. And then setup. Um, every single one of these does have some, some assembly required to them. Uh, they all come with, and I actually did a, a standalone video on this and showed it. I actually did a video on this last year that shows how to set up a diesel heater. So I'll leave that link in the description. But I mean, they're, they're all the same um, because all of these are the same pretty much, except for size. Um, so you you do have to install your exhaust. Uh, some, like the Vivers, do come with a, a muffler on them. Uh, the H calorie comes with a muffler. Uh, the Silville did not come with a muffler. I did purchase a muffler separately from it. Does it make a difference? Yes. Um, the, the sound output, does, from a volume level, it's not really different. But without the muffler, it's more of a high-pitched sound. And with the muffler, it's a, a lower, more pleasant sound. So how, if, if you buy one that doesn't come with a muffler, um, buy a muffler. It's like 10 bucks. Uh, you do have to do some sort of wiring. They come with just bare wires or ring terminals at the end. They do all run off 12 volt. They're not AC, so they do all, they do all run off 12 volt. So you need to figure out, are you going to connect this you know, to just like a power station and have a 12 volt plug like this that I've, I've put on all these? Um, or are you going to, you know, you can put an Anderson adapter at the end. If you've got a DIY 12 volt system in your rig, uh, you can plug it in with Anderson. So there's, you can decide how you want it. I, I think just running it off 12 volt is, you know, these, all, all power stations have this. And I think that's super easy to do. And so you got the wiring, you do have to attach the, 
the air intake hose and the, the filter, it's not hard. It's just with a screwdriver, you can knock it all out very easily. Uh, one thing to note, uh, the, with, with, this, with this style here, um, the exhaust does get very hot. Um, and as you can see, uh, this one I, I wrapped with that uh, heat wrap stuff. Honestly, from I, I don't know that it made a difference. As you can see, I haven't wrapped these. But uh, none of these, or, or, or on all of these, the exhaust, you, know, you can see this has the little, the little feet. This one has the little feet. None of these actually lift the diesel heater up high enough to get the exhaust from touching whatever you're sitting this on. So I've actually run a diesel heater on my, my workbench here, which is, has a wooden top. And somewhere over here, there's a, a burn mark. I've actually run this one with the heat wrap on it on the tailgate of my Gladiator, which has a nice uh, polycarbonate um, the cutting board style surface across the back of it and have a nice melted section in my, my tailgate table uh, with heat wrap shape, little indentions in it. So that's why I don't think that's worth it. Uh, so just, just note, if you're, if you're gonna be using these, I carry just a little small aluminum folding table that I rest this on. Uh, I will clear out a spot on the ground as long as there's not like leaves and stuff around it. If I'm camping on rocks or sand, I'll set it directly on the ground. But make sure you're not setting this on something that can catch on fire or, or melt. Uh, I've seen a lot of people just take some, some two by four or some two by two wood and all of these have um, little mounting holes here and just screw a, you know, a, a two by four on, on each leg to, to raise it up a little bit. So just be aware of that. Uh, now, what I love about this, this doesn't need that. This uh, has, everything is internal, nothing comes out the bottom and you, you don't need that. I think that covers everything um, from a, uh, hopefully helping you make the right decision. Uh, these, these are the brands I have. There's a lot more brands on Amazon. There's another couple of brands that are doing some cool form factor things that actually do lift the, um, the, the feet up higher off the ground. Actually, H Calorie makes one. I've, I've seen it on their, their list. And there's some other brands that are doing some cool things. I think they're all pretty much the same except for the higher end stuff. Uh, I, I think those are legit different and better. Um, TBD, we'll be testing one soon. Um, but I, th I think that covers all the, the key features and things to look out for. Uh, so hope it was helpful. If you would, you know, ask me any questions you have, leave a comment. Uh, give the video a like, subscribe to the channel if you're not. We are racing toward 100,000 subscribers uh, by the end of the year. Don't know that we're going to hit it. I do know if you're watching and not subscribed and don't subscribe, we won't. So help me out and go hit that subscribe button. Uh, and if, if you like what we're doing and you, maybe you want to consider supporting the channel, uh, help us keep going on you know, all of our crazy adventures and filming our, our you know, the content that we're able to pull up, put out, get access to special events, special content, all of our GPS data from our trips. Uh, Patreon link is in the description. Would love for you to, to become a patron supporter of ours. And for shirts, hats, stickers, patches, uh, those sort of things, uh, check out shopoverlandapparel.com. So thanks for watching. See you next time.